Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today I'm going to teach you about getting slightly better at using that camera tool in Adobe After Effects. It won't take too long, there's some pretty simple things, but I think it'll go a long way, so let's uh, get into it. Okay, so first off, this is less of a tutorial because we're not making a specific thing, but it's more like a lesson. So this is an After Effects lesson about how to use the camera. So make a new composition, whatever size tickles your fancy, then don't tell anybody about your fancy at all, and we're going to make a new camera. And here's some things about the camera that we're going to need to remember are things like depth of field being enabled, which means things outside of a narrow plane are going to be blurrier as they're further outside of that plane. So depth of field is basically everything past this dotted line here is blurry, everything in here is blurry, but this line is perfectly awesome. Then the focal distance, which is the distance to that line, is uh, basically like the focus ring on a real camera. Then we have things like aperture right there, which is the size of that opening, measured in millimeters or f-stops. And then blur level, which is a multiplier on this effect, so usually you should just keep that at 100. Anyway, so we're going to make a new camera, and we're going to edit a few things about it, but that's just a brief overview, so who cares? So it's going to give me a warning that says cameras and lights do not affect 2D layers. There are no other layers other than the camera, so it's going to give you that warning. Don't worry about this warning unless, you know, you forget to make layers 3D, in which case this is telling you why nothing's happening. So we have a camera. The next thing we need is something for it to point at, so we're just going to make some text, because that's perfectly good. Text, there it is, wonderful, I'm so good at this. Uh, since it's a 2D layer, uh, we can just align it using the Window Align tool, and then we can align it into the middle here, so center, center of the composition. You can't do that to 3D layers, so just so you're aware, you can't do that. And then we're going to take that text, and we're going to make it 3D. So if you can't see the 3D buttons, it's because you need to hit toggle switches slash modes, and then make it 3D. Boom. So this is a 3D thing. And we have the anchor point that's way down here. So before we get carried away, I'm just going to move the anchor point into the center. So this text now has a reference point. Its anchor point is dead center in the middle of that. So just remember that Anything when we say, what's the position of that layer? That position is the position of the anchor point of that layer. So keep that in your head. I just pointed at my head, even though you can't see me. That's, that's also not important. So we have a camera. We have a thing for the camera to look at. Let's make a new, let's say solid, call this uh, background. It can be whatever, I don't actually care. Just because I don't like looking at that checker background, which is the transparency grid, and black doesn't work with this color of text. I don't even know why I chose these things. Who cares? So, we have a camera, something for it to look at. Just make a new null object, and we're going to use this null object to help us control the camera. A lot of people use this technique, and I have to credit Andrew Kramer for making it really popular, that you make a null object, then you parent the camera to the null object, so when you move the null object around, the camera moves with it, and it creates an easier way to manipulate the camera. Now, this also means that the camera's position is going to be relative to that null object, so if we want to move closer or further away to that null object, it's going to be only dependent on this stuff here. And then likewise, we can change the orientation of this camera to move around independent of what it's looking at. You know, that's that's a pretty good deal. So just undo that stuff there. Now you need to make that null object 3D. That's super important before you start doing weird stuff. But basically the camera is now stuck, if you can imagine, on an imaginary line between itself and the null object at a distance of this. And then that camera operates on a swivel. So we just set these values to zero and we've got the null object and we've got some text. So we have to link these things together. And one of the things I want to link is what's in focus should always be what is at the null object. So that means the focal distance should always be the distance of the position here and then inverted. So let me just hit uh, AA, which will call up the camera options. And then I'm going to alter the focal distance here by holding down Alt and clicking on it, which will pull this up, which is an expression. And then I'm going to hit shift P to call up the position, and I'm going to just link focal distance to specifically the last unit here, and then multiply it by negative one, sorry, negative one, 
and that means that this focal distance will always be whatever distance we are from the null object, meaning whatever's at the null object is in focus. This is important for when you start zooming around and things start to get a little crazy, you will be able to quickly know what should be in focus and why. So, we've created these things, they're linked together, what does it all mean and how do we use it? Well, we have this text that's dead center, and I'm going to show you how to duplicate part of the intro by just duplicating that text, calling up its position and orientation, and uh, just send it off, you know, somewhere, like down here, it's away, we don't know where it is now, and then change its orientation to like a bunch of values, I don't really care which values, these are random values. Now we want the camera to move from looking at this text to looking at the other text. So, this is text 2. We don't need to alter the camera though, we need to alter the null object, so call it bits position and rotation 2. And, setting keyframes here at the beginning, where we're looking at this text, move ahead, you know, however many keyframes, doesn't, doesn't really matter. I hold down the shift key and then hit the page down key to make that go. And then we just need to take the position information, so click on that property, copy it, and then click on the layer and paste it. So we're moving, then the position goes there, and the orientation goes there as well. So we're keyframing from this text position to the other text position, and we're keyframing from the one text orientation to the same orientation as the other text. So the null object is moving from one to the other, and it's changing its rotation to be matched to the other as well. If you want to add something in like a little bit of wiggle, you can just alt click and then go wiggle and then something like, uh, you know, one time a second change uh, 0.25 degrees so that as it's hanging out, it's just going to be, you know, subtly wiggling about in its orientation relative to where it's at. So that's nice. Or you can apply a similar wiggle to the camera to give it sort of like a hand done thing. Apply that wiggle to both the orientation and the position and maybe something a little bit more normal like 1 comma 50 so then it's moving around as it's looking at this thing but it still moves from one piece of text all the way over to the other now you need to you know easy ease these and junk like that but basically this is how to make it go if you want to move the camera closer to this new text for example we want it to like zoom in just to make sure that you are keyframing the position of the camera as it's relative to that null object, remember? So set a keyframe at the beginning, keyframe where it's landed at this other text, and then uh, just change this to zoom in on it. So it's going to get closer. Boom, just like that. So it's that easy. I know that the camera tool is pretty mysterious for a lot of people, so hopefully these are some techniques that you can use to get better control over this thing. And always remember, you want to use a lot of easy ease and a lot of easing and just have way better control over your camera movement because jerky camera movement implies that it's all virtual and that makes people uncomfortable and dislike what you're doing. Unless you're making it intentionally jerky, but if it's fast motion, hard stop, that doesn't make any sense to people. So you really need to ease those motions. So remember, select your keyframes, ease them up, go into the graph editor, take the time to make this stuff look good, or at least you know, better. It doesn't have to look good, you know, it just has to look, you know. So, you know, a couple of interesting shapes and that's all good. And use the wiggle expression liberally and just have fun with it. Just get crazy. But these are the basics of how to use the camera. If you want to make this thing go to multiple places, then you just copy and paste the position information and orientation information of those things. Now, I'm sure in the comments I'm going to get a lot of stuff about, we'll just use the SureTarget plugin. That's great if you want to always rely on plugins, and maybe that's a thing you do. But as you can see, this has taken us very little time to do, and now we have a more solid understanding of the camera. So the purpose of this sort of lesson isn't to tell you how to get around using SureTarget. It's meant to teach you how to use the camera and how to understand After Effects. Imagine a world where you didn't know what SureTarget was or who Andrew Kramer was. You only knew who Evan Abrams was, and that would suck. You'd be stuck doing things with your own hands for a lot of times. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Hopefully this has taught you a thing or two about the camera. One last thing before I go, though. Whenever you're making a camera and you're moving it around and you're changing its position and things aren't working out exactly like you'd want and it's kind of looking at weird stuff, remember that the problem is usually that you have to go layer, transform, auto-orient, and then click off.
Mine's on that by default because it's really annoying. Hopefully this has been an informative tutorial for you and that you've enjoyed learning new things about how to use the camera. Uh, stop by here every week for a new tutorial. I try to make one every week, and if I miss it, I apologize a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you want to learn about After Effects and visual effects stuff. It's great times, and hit me up on the Twitter or in the comments if you ever have questions. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.